Hey folks, this is Kalani. With the last patch of Battle for Azeroth well underway, we've hit that point in every expansion where we can't quite see over the horizon. We know that there's currently no patch 8.3.5 planned for us, which could mean either we won't see anything whatsoever between now and the pre-patch for the Shadowlands expansion, or it just means we won't see anything big. Some smaller changes could be coming down the pipeline, but not necessarily anything to get excited about, unless it's a count wide essences. I can see that being introduced before BFA is completely over, even though I think the sooner the better for that particular edition. Either way, we're more or less done with this expansion, so it's a perfect time to look back over the last year and a half and pick apart everything that went wrong. We've got a lot of content to chew through, so let's take a closer look at the worst parts of Battle for Azeroth. The absolute worst part of the Battle for Azeroth expansion for the vast majority of players was probably the randomness. The good old dollop of RNG that every game seems to have these days, except Blizzard seems to have gone with the more is better approach this time around. It's like when you want Parmesan cheese on your pasta at a decent Italian place, but you just don't tell the server to stop, so you end up with a plate of Parmesan and a bit of spaghetti. It's just not going to go down well, you know what I mean? A a little bit of RNG can spice up the game, give you an unexpected reward or an unexpected power jump, but in Battle for Azeroth it's literally everywhere. I hope you looked at the video length before clicking on this one by the way, because we're going to be here for a while. The main complaint that we see these days is RNG in gearing up. Since the start of Battle for Azeroth, RNG has been a part of almost every gearing up avenue. We've had random loot from Emissary Awards, completely random loot from Island Expeditions and Warfronts, random loot from Battlegrounds and Arenas, random loot from the Mythic Plus Cache. The only way to acquire Azeroth gear from Mythic Plus Dungeons is by using random tokens tokens for the vast majority of players. The guaranteed items are in there, sure, at 20,000 Titan Residuum, so if you aren't pushing plus 20s, it's going to take absolutely forever for you to get any of those pieces. If you want to buy the 445 or 460 Azeroth gear, it's gambling only, I'm afraid. And don't even get me started on Benthic gear, that was a mess and a half for sure. Being able to print as many items as you could afford with mana pearls, searching for the one item with the perfect special effect and have it roll a random socket, and then doing it again for three or four different slots of gear. We had plenty of RNG with the Titan Forging System too, and even more RNG now that Corruption has replaced it. But it's not just gear acquisition randomized to a ridiculous degree right now, how well your gear will do is completely random as well. With Corrupted Gear, you have to get lucky and roll the right dice to get some of the better Corruptions. Twilight Devastation, Infinite Stars, Gushing Wound, you know the ones. But the way in which these effects proc is also unreliable, and depending on your RNG, your Infinite Stars could be 30% of your overall damage, or 10%. Looking at Warcraft logs, it's absolutely insane how people get to the top passes there. It's literally just boiled down to how many procs of your Corruptions you get. Sure, you can play play perfectly, but if you play perfectly, and someone else plays perfectly, but gets really lucky with procs, they're going to be miles ahead of you. RNG has become so ingrained in gear and power levels of characters in general, that you just can't tell if someone is playing well, or if they're just getting lucky. It's also nearly impossible to actually work towards a good set of gear right now. The highest item level loot comes from the Mythic Raid, and then from the weekly Mythic Plus Cache. One of these sources is a bit more reliable, but the other is the embodiment of RNG gearing in World of Warcraft. If the weekly box was the only source of RNG loot in the game, it probably wouldn't stick out quite as badly, but because so many different areas of the game reward loot based upon RNG, it just gets to the point where there's simply too much. Right now you're also leaning so heavily on the corrupted system that a high item level piece of gear might not even be the best loot you have access to. Lower item level pieces with good corruptions might just overpower your super lucky mythic raid or mythic weekly cash loot even if it's really good for you. 
It's not just gearing though. If you remember back to the start of the expansion, island expeditions were a complete mess, mainly because we had no idea how they really worked. All of the rewards were on strange loot tables and were rewarded at random, so there was almost no way to work towards anything on that massive loot table. Someone eventually figured out that it was dependent on what types of monsters you killed on the island, and that might have been how it actually worked, but the rewards within a monster type loot table were still awarded at random. Now that the system was changed, everything is completely random once again. The only factor is what monsters you face on any given island which rotates with the weeks, so you don't actually have any control over that either. An entire new system had every single possible reward based upon RNG. It wasn't until a bit later that a vendor was added with additional rewards you could work towards and another vendor was added later on that allowed you to buy boxes that contain rewards for specific loot tables. But even though it's now easier to go after what you want, it's still just another gambling system. RNG is even randomly forced into systems that were already working pretty well before. The mission tables get a lot of flack for a lot of different reasons, but I feel like we took a huge step backwards with the Battle for Azeroth version. Legion tables were way more interesting, the only bad part was the massive time gating at the very start of the expansion on the class campaigns, but that's not really relevant to the mission tables, that's more a problem of the campaigns itself. Your heroes were interesting and mattered, you could recruit the minions you wanted, Gear meant a lot more for your champions and you could tailor them in a variety of ways and you can have a bodyguard whenever you wanted out in the world. They stripped most of that out in Battle for Azeroth, and while I guess it's fine if they want to trim that system back a bit more and have it play uh, more of a support role in this expansion, cool, dandy, whatever you want. But who thought only being able to randomly recruit minions was a good idea? The countering system still works in a similar way, you need specific minions to counter specific missions, except you can't recruit the ones that you want. You just have to cross your fingers that the melee troops come your way, or the ranged troops, or the mounted troops. This is a a little better right now with some of the contracts that give you a troop type, but for the majority of the expansion it was completely random. You couldn't pick what you want and you can't dismiss them either, so the only way to get rid of troops you don't need is to send them to their death. It's just such a weird place to add in RNG and forced RNG and make it the only option. I mean, we could be here all day talking about RNG in Battle for Azeroth, but my main hope going forward is that they tone it down a bit. Okay, maybe tone it down a lot. Randomness can provide some little blips of excitement, but when we can't work towards anything at all, because RNG has dipped its filthy fingers into absolutely everything, it just drains all of the fun out of the game. The next worst thing in Battle for Azeroth has got to be the story. This has been a roller coaster for sure, and honestly, it just hasn't been that great from the start. Coming out of Legion, the forces of Azeroth had banded together to defeat the Burning Legion. In his last moment of desperation, Sargeras plunged his cursed sword into our planet before getting swept away by the other Titans. His last ditch effort to destroy the Titan Soul he had been working so hard to snuff out. We have no idea what this means for us. Can we repair this damage? What happens to our home if we can't? Oh, but look, this Titan blood stuff is really shiny and oh wow, it explodes. That's cool. Hey, here's a neat idea. Let's all fight over it and start another arms race and forget about all the cool space laser stuff we were using throughout Legion at the same time because if the Alliance used it, they'd probably just blow the Horde to Kingdom Come and shoehorn another faction conflict in here to really get everyone amped up. The Battle for Azeroth is a faction conflict expansion. That's going to be amazing, right guys? Except we knew almost from the very beginning that it would be bigger than that, but let's just pretend for now. Alright, okay, so each side recruits some new friends, the Zandalari trolls for the Horde, cool cool, and the Kulturans for the Alliance, it's about time. Alright, we need to build up our armies and secure a fleet so we can destroy the opposite faction. The Alliance then storms the Zandalari capital to try and drive a wedge between the Horde and the Zandalari, killing the Zandalari king in the meantime. That strengthens the bond between the Zandalari and the Horde, and a pact is made, cool, so that backfired horrendously. 
And then in the aftermath of that event, the Horde sail out into the sea to bait the Alliance. Good job taking that one, guys. But suddenly the waters open up, and now we're dealing with Ajara and her underwater kingdom. We take the fight to Ajara in her palace and try to dethrone her, except it was a trap all along, and our Heart of Azeroth is exactly what she needs to free Nazoth. We may have defeated the Queen, but we unleashed the last old god at the same time. That's probably not very good. And by this point, we're starting to question the whole Horde vs alliance thing, but hey, here's the bigger than faction conflict storyline we've been expecting for the entire expansion. So now we have Nazoth and the Black Empire, old god minions everywhere, void portals opening up, visions of potential futures driving us all crazy, and then we shoot Nazoth with a laser beam and we're all done. The most interesting and exciting part of this expansion, with the most potential for story and development, basically doesn't get a chance to actually go anywhere or do anything because we take out the final boss in the raid tier. The chaps over in Ogrimmar or Stormwind probably heard a few whispers on the wind telling them to commit bloody murder and then five seconds later they have a clear head again. It's just wrapped up so quickly, but I think that's the main problem with the story in BFA. We've jumped around so much and gone through so many story plot points so quickly that it just feels jarring. They're all connected, but not very well. At this point, we're just wrapping everything up neatly to move forward into the Shadowlands, which has a completely different storyline with the exception of Sylvanas, which is also one of the really frustrating parts of BFA's story. Almost everything that happened was to explain Sylvanas and her goal of getting to the mysterious Jailer. So Battle for Azeroth was paving the way for the next expansion, that's not too weird, but doing it so quickly and haphazardly that we end up flying all over the place because there are a lot of plot points that they wanted to get through for Sylvanas' story, leaves us wanting a little bit more from all of those stories, I think, those mini-stories, because they didn't really want to flesh out the consequences for starting many of those plot points. I think we'll have to wait for the Shadowlands expansion to really see if this ended up being problematic, because that's where things are really leading, isn't it? All of this was to get us to the Shadowlands and to see what Sylvanas' plan with the Jailer is and how that's all going to work. So if that ends up being super awesome, I think we can probably forgive most of BFA's story. But for now, it's a bit in tatters. Oh, and perhaps one of the most important plot points that kicked this whole expansion off still hasn't been resolved, and we don't know if it will be. There's still a giant sword sticking out of Silithus, by the way, Azeroth is still bleeding out all over the place, but don't worry, we beat Nazoth. We're the saviors of Azeroth, and everything is fine and dandy, and here we go into the Shadowlands, because I guess that's more important than stopping our planet from bleeding out. It just seems super weird to completely skip over that major point. Seems kind of important, but moving to the next expansion might be the right idea anyway for gameplay purposes. So many players are tired of Battle for Azeroth, I think a new expansion that gets it right from the start is really what the game needs right now. But there is going to be an issue that will be highlighted quite quickly as we start leveling up through the Shadowlands expansion, and it's another hotly contested topic for BFA. We have had so many different new rental powers introduced throughout this expansion cycle that I honestly don't think we're going to know what to do when we lose it all. Legion had some powerful rental powers too. We lost our artifact weapons, and we lost access to a lot of different legendary effects from the Legion legendaries. That hurt a lot. Leveling in BFA was one of the times where it was like, this is really not that fun. We're getting weaker and weaker as we level up, and we're losing access to abilities and points and effects. It was just bizarre. You're supposed to get stronger, and things are supposed to get more fun, more abilities, more things, but nope, we just lost them, and that hurt a lot. And it destroyed some classes in the way they play. Every class going into Legion was redesigned, and most of them were redesigned with their artifact weapons in mind. A handful of classes relied so heavily on their artifacts that when they disappeared, the class was left almost unplayable, and losing legendary effects just made that worse. That's with two systems being taken away from us going into the next expansion. In Battle for Azeroth so far, we have the Azerite gear and Azerite traits. They were sort of left behind a bit because they weren't doing too well, but a lot of classes currently revolve around very specific combinations of Azerite traits. When they disappear, we will definitely feel it. 
We also have the Heart of Azeroth Essence System. There's a wide variety of essences that all do different things, and we won't be able to use any of them in the Shadowlands expansion. Whether that's the Fire Mages not having access to the crucial Memory of Lucid Dreams Essence, or other classes just losing their extra DPS buttons, it's still another system that will almost entirely disappear as we head into our next adventure. With patch 8.3, we now also have the legendary cloak and the corrupted gear tacked onto that list, and while they don't really provide you with anything interactive, the extra effects and damage will be sorely missed, and all of the corruption sets that we build will mean nothing after we level up. If you look at your character right now, its abilities and how it plays, and then take away the artifact armor or traits, take away the heart of Azeroth essences, take away the corrupted effects and the legendary cloak, you really aren't left with a lot in most cases. It's also worth noting that the dev team has said that we won't see many significant changes to a lot of classes or class design going into the Shadowlands expansion, so we'll be relying entirely on these rental powers being replaced by other rental powers specific to Shadowlands. Not only does this mean that the Shadowlands leveling experience will probably feel similar to Battle for Azeroth and that we're just losing a bunch of systems, features and power as we level up, but the cycle will probably repeat itself if all we get are more rental powers to fill in the gaps and no real changes to class design. While we're talking about class design, I wonder what the dev team will decide to do about the global cooldown change. Now that we've had it for an entire expansion, I can't help but feel like it didn't really do anything positive. It wasn't game breaking, it just seemed kind of a pointless annoyance, but it may still be something that they stick with for the next expansion anyway, which would be a bit disappointing. I think these are definitely the real sore points for a lot of players this expansion. The overwhelming presence of RNG in every type of content, the storyline that just zipped all over the place, leaving a few threads hanging, and the strong focus on rental powers that we're going to lose very soon. What do you think was the worst part of this expansion? Are there any other glaringly obvious problems in the expansion that we didn't talk about? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, you can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.